Morning everyone, this is Shiova here. Uh, today I will be reacting to the Raiden Shogun uh, trailer, uh, the character demo. And I'll be reacting to it in Chinese, Japanese and English. Uh, so yeah, let's start.到板街巷极具之处将军所追逐的I wonder how many people originally thought that she was uh, a katana runner, so a sword would run the whole army. Ru Fu Shi, Yi Fu Yu Ben Zhi, and Dei Jiao Xing Cun Yu. Ji Nai Ben Zhi, Shen Ying Yu Yi Sui Pao Ying Zhi Xia. Qi Ming, Yong Heng, Wu Mie, Duan Jue. Yeah, so that was uh, again a very good trailer. As you can see, it's much longer than the Zhongli trailer, much longer than the Klee trailer. Um, so here we can see that they've really started to change how much effort they're putting into all of these trailers. And I'm pretty sure if I go into um, the next Archon trailer, which hasn't been released yet, but I'm assuming when we do get to that point, it's going to be at least three minutes and more. Um, but yeah, it was a very good trailer. I really enjoyed the aspects that they've added to it, which I'll go over once I've finished all three trailers. So now it's a Japanese version. This is voiced by one of my favorite um, voice actors. Uh, Miyuki is... Um, the voice actor for a number of characters like Seo from uh, Gekan Shoujo, which I really enjoyed. Um, she also voices. Who else does she voice? She voices a number of characters I really enjoy, but right now they don't come to the top of my head. But she's got one of those unique voices in anime again. She's got this a certain pitch that is really calming, you know, very clear almost crystal clear oh I know now she um, voices the um, glasses lady the green haired lady um, in uh, what war 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 otaku yeah that one the one with the um, grown up otakus who are working in the same office who basically are going through love and that was again a very good performance as well uh, but let's get started なるかみの国は幾千年も変わっておらぬ。家々と路地の集う場所、そこに雷電将軍は座して、そこから属世の愛別陸を見下ろし、目に映すは切な無情の風。
again, I, I really like this camera angle at the inside, this, this one shot. I'm actually quite interested how her sword flies to her. Definitely chose the right voice actor for Raiden for the Japanese version. Now is the English one. In the land of the Narukami, centuries pass without change. Deep in the heart of the city stands the lofty abode of the Raiden Shogun. She looks down upon her realm at mortal joys and woes and sees a world mired in impermanence. By mighty lightning, she rules over the transients. Trivial yearning and petty passion. They vanish like a mist, but the Shogun pursues unfettered and unperturbed eternity. Only through eternity are you closest to the heavenly principles. Lightning is eternal. The world is but shadow. Fantasy can only survive with an underlying reality. Reality is the stillness buried deep beneath the illusion. This is eternity. Born to oblivion! the stuff of dreams all shall fade away yeah again very good dubbing as well i think they're getting better in choosing the voice actors and i know that um with the english voice actors they've done a few um changes and then redubbed um some of the works like barbara has changed uh, i believe amber uh, some recordings of hers have changed paimon i remember 
Um, someone mentioned that her earlier recordings have all been replaced with newer recordings. Um, so there's been um, a quality upgrade in the English dubs. Um, Japanese dubs has always been consistent uh, from what I've seen because most of the Japanese voice actors that they've chosen are professional uh, anime voice actors. So, and I'm pretty sure the same is the same for the English, but the English obviously more work has been put to uh, refining the quality of that to kind of maintain the consistency overall, all versions. I've not seen a uh, Korean version, so I can't really say much about that one. Uh, again, with, with this trailer, we can see that the length is getting longer for these uh, new characters, these five star characters. Their trailers are already past two minutes. Uh, Zhongli, if I remember correctly, was just under two minutes. And now we have Raiden Shogun's, which is over two and a half minutes. Um, but this one is very interesting um, compared to the um, Zhongli trailer. I mean, first of all, it starts similar to Zhongli's trailer. You have someone narrating something before it gets to the main character. So here, instead of the uh, storyteller in the UA, we get Yaimiko. So Yaimiko here, this raven is quite important as well because I think this raven is supposed to symbolize uh, the eternity that um, Raiden Shogun is going through right now. It's supposed to be um, very symbolic to how she feels and also the domain that she's in as well, which is actually quite similar and probably maybe a reference to Naruto. Um, I'll speak about that in a minute, but I believe it has... Because, like, again, Mihoyo is a bunch of otakus who basically love um, anime culture and mech culture and all that stuff. So it's only natural to expect some kind of insert of what they enjoy. Um, but here we see her narrating, similar to the uh, storyteller anyway, before moving on to the main character. But what I really like about this trailer is here is the camera angle. Just this one shot here, following the raven all the way to the top of the castle, and then this spin over her head. She looks up at us, and then it goes right down into the depth. I mean, that's just a really good one shot. And then here we go into her realm, the realm where she's locked away her her actual self into eternity. So I'm not too sure if you can see it. Um, so here, this sign here is basically the Shurinken in Naruto. This is what I mean by the um, the crow or the raven is um, it's kind of symbolic because Itachi's. Um, I can't remember what it's called, the technique he uses, the one that gives off the uh, illusions, the really powerful illusions. Um, but basically, when he uses it, that's usually the animal that appears. That's the one we associate with Itachi. And I believe this is a reference to that. Um, so again, but it, obviously it's not unique to Naruto. It is just something I'm assuming is associated to, with. I love how it moves also from the traditional um, orchestra piece, uh, which is more calm, more instrumenty, to a more modern um, piece uh, that symbolizes the, uh, the electro that she's using. So I'm very interested if Mihoyo has any plans to change the movesets in the future for characters, uh, or introduce different um, character sets like they have with Honkai Impact. I understand that in Honkai Impact you have um, different versions of different characters and different um, and each one has different movesets to use um, but I don't know if Genshin is going to be that kind of game but I do like how that sword like flew to her <laughs> like she's using the force or something and this is here to um, show off her power and control over the nation <laughs> I'm assuming that's a shamisen that they're using in the background right now. Again, originally I thought she was going to be a sword user, but she turns out to be a pole arm user. So we now have two 
Archons who use pole arms. We've got Zhongli, we've now got uh, Raiden Shogun. Um, so I'm quite interested to see what the next Archon is going to be using because we know Venti uses the bow, but I was not expecting um, Raiden to be using a pole arm. I, I was originally expecting that they were going to use a sword, but she does use a sword when she uses a burst, so maybe that kind of fixes that up. But originally, I kind of thought it's Japan, Katana. Maybe she would be a sword user, but no, she's a power arm user. Very interesting though, because she, they gave her Naginata basically, which is the weapon of choice for female warriors in Japan. Yes. As in, um, if you look at some of the um, feudal Japan uh, period dramas or movies, what happens in the siege is the women are all armed with Naginatas. They're all taught how to fight these, these noble women or... Uh, uh, Maids in waiting are taught to use these to protect um, their um, uh, their ladies, basically. And some famous um, Japanese sh uh, generals' wives have also been known to ride out into battle holding one of these as well. Which is actually quite derivative of the uh, pole arms used in China, but I'm pretty sure there's some sort of cultural link to these as always. I never knew how this really works. I knew it's supposed to charge up as soon as you receive energy. Um, so the idea, I assume, is to charge it all the way up, then use your burst because that's when you unleash all the power. Problem is, I keep forgetting this thing exists most of the time when I'm using Raiden. The thing I do like about Raiden with her pole arm is she's very similar to Zhongli. They're very quick attackers, so they're doing a lot of damage over a very short period of time. Um, but the problem with the Archon pole arm users is that their attack, their basic attack damage is less than 40% of the original attack. Um, which means that you'll have to upgrade a normal attack in order to even get them to 100%, which a lot of people will say that's a waste. Because you, what you want is to use their burst. The difference between um, Zhongli's burst and Raiden's burst is Zhongli drops a big giant meteor, it does the damage in one go, it petrifies uh, for a few seconds. Whereas Raiden, you use her burst, she does her damage in front of her, that big damage, and then she maintains herself in that sword form for about another 5 seconds, which you can then use charged attacks or normal attacks. I'm not too sure if upgrading her normal attack increases the amount her burst damage does when conducting normal attacks. She is pretty cool. Um, having her on the team and having activated her skill leaves this on the field with any character that you change out with, um, which is quite nice to have. Again, I like how they move into the, um, the black and white, the monochrome. Um, kind of similar to how we had Zhongli kind of going into that um, Chinese ink brush uh, style from time to time in his trailer. I also have to like say that I like this uh, bit where they're introducing her showing you that she's got two sides, that she's not where she, we think she is. And then this uh, valley, um, I'm very bad with the names, this is an issue, but this is part of her law where she had used that one attack which basically carved open the island with a straight line to kill one of the old gods. Very similar to Zhongli again, we've got Zhongli's uh, stone forest and here we've got Raiden's uh, island where she's basically cleaved it into a uh, demonstration of their Archon powers. I guess the difference between her and Zhongli is with her, she's kind of polluted um, or irradiated which, uh, the area that she's uh, damaged. Because this part is permanent, um, if I'm uh, 
if I've understood the law that this this um, river here, this area here, is always irradiated with electrodes. So if you go down there, and you don't have a shield, you will gradually lose your health. Um, this island has always been struck by lightning, but you can turn that off if you finish a few of the puzzles. Now this is what I found um, different to the law. Obviously with her one, she cleaves it in two, so it means that she's done a upward, spirit, uh, upward stance and just swung down, or she just swung down straight. Here she swings to the side, she creates this kind of void, um, like a black hole, and that creates a load of damage to everyone, and it gets explodes kind of. I do like the fact that she pulls the sword out from her domain. I mean, we get the lore that basically she's put her spiritual consciousness into an object, which has prolonged her life and everything. Um, and then we also understand that uh, the vessel that is her isn't actually her. It's something that she created. Again, the camera angles where it's just zooms in, follows her, goes around her, adds more dynamic um, action. And again, moving from the Tevat realm into her Infinity realm is a nice touch. And we see it's very techno compared to Zhongli. Zhongli's is very... Um, Aesthetic, I guess, is the right word. I mean, technically, he leads a whole army of um, Adepti, and the Adepti are known to be like um, Taoists, basically, which are aesthetic. They don't have a clinging or um, any sort of emotion or feeling. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be. They're supposed to be not attached to the world, in a sense. Kind of like Buddhist priests, but not the same as Buddhist priests. I do like how they show her off, like with this kind of electrostatic kind of feel. You know, the different uh, filters that they've used. And then the vision's degree, showing that um, this is the, where we are in her story. She is a tyrant, or they're treating her like a tyrant. This doesn't ever happen for us in the move set, but it does happen for the um, the boss fight that we do have for her now. And that's why I'm interested to know if Mihoi has any plans to expand the move sets because I do feel like some of these moves in these trailers, especially these new ones, where they've added more effort into showing more of the character's style. I mean, here, for example. We can see the top half, but there's this a little focus here on her thighs with this um, accentuated um, underwear that she's wearing. They, they kind of removed the traditional underwear that was originally in the game. Now they're kind of just given these kind of more safety sports type uh, boxer shorts to, to the women, which is a nice touch as well. And they got the Zetai Pro Wiki. Um, the absolute territory for stockings. Again, another otaku um, trope. Again, I also like how she's looking into the raven or crow's eyes. It's like she's looking at herself through the realm that she's in. Yeah, Raiden Shogun is one of those characters that if you didn't get her, you've kind of got to get her. Her skill is a constant electro applier, which again, if you have any pyro characters, like if you've got a Diluc, that would increase the power that he can dish out because of the reactions, the overload reactions would be more constant. Though technically the best pyro applier in the entire game is still Klee, because she's the pyro catalyst. Um, so Klee, Yang Fei would be the best because they're always applying the pyro and therefore having a constant um, electro 
via means constant overloads. Um, she's also good, of course, for superconduct, which can in effect weaken defense uh, for certain um, for certain characters that are being used. And then again, her burst does a lot of damage as well, so she is something that can do a lot of damage. And she's also a battery because her build is a uh, energy recharge. So my one is at almost 300% energy recharge, um, which means that she is always recharging the bursts of my team. Uh, therefore, she's an important addition to when I'm doing the domains. Um, so I might record myself challenging domains, uh, sorry, the Abyss, Floor 9, 10, and 11. I can't do 12 yet because none of my characters are 90. And I don't have any constellations on any of my five star characters, so I don't think I'll be able to even get three stars to even get an extra 50 primos. But uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. Um, I haven't actually gotten any new subscribers, but I hope to at some point. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully, I'll be able to react to more videos in the future. Hope you enjoy your day. Bye.